Hey, what's going on guys? It's Delvage, and today I want to bring you a quick Photoshop tutorial on how to create a YouTube thumbnail. So basically, if you don't know what a thumbnail is, it's the kind of images that you'll see on like a YouTube video. Uh, let me go to my YouTube right here. Basically, you see this thing right here? These things are thumbnails, and you really want to create good thumbnails for your YouTube videos so that it'll attract a lot of people because if I'm just scrolling through this this thumbnail right here or this one right here and even really this one this is a great thumbnail by the way Ali A makes great thumbnails but you want to have great thumbnails so that your video stands out in the sub box so people click on your video because I'm more prompted to click on this video without even reading this title or these these two titles because this has a cooler thumbnail than that right so I'm going to show you how to make a quick and simple one so first here in Photoshop we're going to go to File, New, and then the Width and Height in Pixels. You always want to have Pixels. 1280 by 720, and then the resolution is going to be at 300, not 3000. <laughs> 300, and the background's white. The reason why not it's not going to be 1080, um, 1080p is because YouTube doesn't allow a file size that big for thumbnails, so we do have to use 720, but it doesn't really matter. So the first thing... There's basically three different ways that you can create a thumbnail. I'm just going to create a pretty simple one right here. It's going to be the radial lines that you see uh, right here. You see this guy, Pentic, has radial lines in his thumbnail. Uh, this guy, Cryptic, has radial lines in his thumbnail. I'm going to show you how to make these here in Photoshop. And it's it really, it stands out and makes your text stand out. So the first thing you're going to go to want to do is you're going to want to go to the rectangular marquee tool. And you're going to select half of the document page. About half. That's that's pretty much good. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to go to want to go to the paint bucket tool, or you can go to the gradient tool. It doesn't matter. What you want what you're going to want to do is you're going to go, want to go to linear if you're going to the gradient tool, or if you're going to use the paint bucket tool, you want to change the color of that paint bucket to whatever color you want one of the lines to be. And I'll show you what the how to make the other line the specific color that you want but right now I'm gonna use the gradient tool I'm gonna to hold shift and go down and that's gonna create a nice little uh, gradient for half of our uh, picture or thumbnail right here so I'm gonna to go to control D to deselect that and then what I'm going to go to do what I'm going to want to go to do is I'm going to go to filter distort and then wave now here on the waves we're gonna to go to 36 for the minimum I can find the freaking 36 on my keyboard and then we're going to go to 36 37 for max my bad and then the number of generators is going to be all the way up at 999 but the I mean I would do 999 but I think I'm going to stay a little bit lower just because there's a little problem that arises if you have all the way up to 99 so my bad stay around uh the, the top version is better than all of the, all the way down here because if you see there's a little bit of a difference in the lines at the bottom. Uh, this is for if you're using the paint bucket tool. I should also recommend this. If you're using the paint bucket tool, try to stay up here. But if you're using the gradient tool, it's a little bit better if you stay around in the mid areas or even all the way down here because you see it gives the gradient lines. So what you want to do, you, by the way, shine, not triangle or square. You want to go to shine and just leave everything else as is it should be default by that Here you click OK and it's going to create a bunch of lines like this for you alright the next thing that you want that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to filter again distort polar coordinates and you see this is the thing that makes the lines and this is the problem that I've, I don't know how to fix this problem for some reason some certain numbers at the top of the uh, the little uh, what's it called radial the top of the radial lines always has this really weird problem but yeah this is basically how you make them then you go to rectangular to polar not polar to rectangle you want to go to polar uh, rectangular to polar and then click OK and there you go you have radial lines as your background oh that's my bad didn't mean to do that you're gonna go to move tool you, can, uh, you, you have to unlock the layer by clicking the little lock single on on symbol on the right and you can move it around as you want. You can resize it by by pressing Control T. You can make it bigger, smaller, whatever you want. And then in order to get these other lines, because you don't want them just white, right? You want them a different color. 
you can go to the paint bucket tool on the same layer you can choose a color that you want I think I'm gonna go for a nice little yellow yeah I think that'll look decent maybe not the best but we'll see and then you just click in the areas that you want I actually don't really like this yellow but it's whatever uh, heck, I gotta change that. I'm sorry, it's so bad. I don't know why I chose that color. Maybe a little bit of a darker yellow. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, and you just click all of the little white spaces and it'll fix them for you. That click that, yeah, okay. Next, you want to go to a second layer and you want to go to the text tool and you choose a font that you want. I, I like Chunk, probably one of my favorite fonts, and then change preferably I mean because you can also edit this later in the effects for your text but either black or white is fine click OK and start typing I'm gonna go to how to and then resize that control T shift to make it only smaller by the actual size because if I don't click shift this is what happens it does all of this stuff right but if I do click shift it makes it like the same size as everything it just shrinks the actual image so I'm gonna put how to click OK and then we'll edit the text later we'll go to another layer create it's way too big but we can always always edit that and then go to another layer once again a and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually have the YouTube uh, logo in our little uh, what's it called I'm just blanking right now our thumbnail we're gonna have the YouTube logo to make everything uh, look a bit bigger and we're actually going to before I do that we're going to merge all of these together so hold on uh, merge visible image edit uh, how do I do this again layer yes merge visible there we go and that will merge everything you can just click this this button the little view button again and this is this is merged all the text so what we can do is we can go to control transform control T and we can resize that text and we can create that how to create it, and then we're going to go to Google Chrome or whatever web browser that you're going to use you're going to go to Google or search and go to the YouTube logo and search that then find a good image that has the YouTube symbol on it maybe I don't know this one okay guys so we finally found a YouTube logo that was working for whatever reason I don't I don't know don't ask me but for whatever reason the YouTube uh, any image that I would pull off of Google images the YouTube logo would just turn black on one side for whatever reason I don't know don't ask me but once you get the YouTube logo if it's not already transparent what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select the magic wand tool and select all of the gray and then press delete on your keyboard and there's still a little bit of the gray in the center of the U so delete that too control D to deselect it and now you have the YouTube logo now you can, you can go, go to control T to transform that and uh, select the size that you want. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, bigger and place it next to the A on my text. And what, what we're gonna actually do, because you see the top of this YouTube is actually overriding or on top of the how to create. So what we can do to fix that is we can move the layer down and then see it's right on top. Now the create is on top of the YouTube and makes it look a little bit better. So now that we have that, I think I'm gonna adjust it a little bit more I think that's good we'll create a final layer for text that's going to say thumbnail we'll click OK again we can always transform it to make it fit our needs there we go and then a thumbnail at the bottom and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually move Hold on, yeah, can save that. I'm going to move the how to create up a little bit more. Same with the YouTube so that the thumbnail isn't all the way at the bottom. Of course, you could just resize the whole thing again. But now we have all of our text. 
Now what we want to do is we're going to want to merge all of the, the two texts again. So we want to merge that. So we're going to go to uh, layer and then we're going to go to merge down and then select all those again. Now we have all of this text in one layer. So now what we can do is we can double click on the layer and we can edit it. I'm going to go for a nice little bevel here. Maybe tone that depth down a little bit. I'll actually probably create a whole new tutorial for the layer style tab. Uh, contour looks pretty cool. Maybe texture. Uh, I don't know about that. Maybe. Nah, I guess that's okay. Add some stroke. Ah, that looks nice. And a gradient overlay. This is a big one too. And we're actually, since always when you're creating text in Photoshop, always try to make sure that it's not blending in with the background. See, if I were to... to you know select that one the text actually blends in with the background too much so I'm gonna select something like maybe this nah blends in with the YouTube logo too much maybe something simple yeah I guess I'll select that one and then I'll tone up the white a little bit more uh, uh, no 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 delete that no I don't know what I'm doing but uh, yeah, that's basically all you have to do. Okay, guys, so now we have all of the text and both both the text, I should say, and the YouTube logo created with all the text effects and all of that extra stuff. And again, you can do all of this separately by clicking or double clicking the layer and then selecting all these options and playing it to how you want or selecting it to how you'd like. But now we have the basic text and the YouTube logo in. One final thing that we're going to add is a little picture maybe a I don't know uh, how about South Park just think of something you know think of something that would really look kinda cool in uh, one of your videos uh, one of your thumbnails something that would look cool that would catch someone's attention we're gonna copy this image and then we're going to create another layer control V to paste that and no, I did not make to make his face purple. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just delete that background with the magic wand tool. Just slowly deleting the background. And control D to dis diselect. And then we're probably going to add some little rotation to him. So it looks like he's coming off the side of the, the thumbnail. No, it did not make the make him to look like that. But you actually play around with this little transform tool. And it looks pretty cool. You know, you can make him look like seriously like he's coming out of the page or the thumbnail. I think that looks pretty cool. And then we can add some effects to him. We can make him bevel, which maybe I don't know. Might look pretty cool. And uh, always check the use global light effect. Uh, use global light. Always uncheck that, I should say, when you're dealing with certain images coming from certain directions. It just doesn't look good half the time. And uh, maybe contour, stroke. Uh, I guess that's okay. Uh, drop shadow. Uh, again, uncheck that. Probably add the distance, some spread, and the size. Looks pretty cool. And uh, no gradient or color overlay, because again, if I chose that, it would completely mess up his face and everything so I'm not gonna check that and now we basically created the YouTube thumbnail you could also add a second image to the left side of the, th the thumbnail right here but that's basically it I hope you enjoyed this Photoshop tutorial if you want to see more make sure you leave a like rating and comment in the comment section below what kind of things you'd like to see from me but anyways guys my name is Delvidge and I'm out peace